Apple just held their annual Worldwide Developers Conference in California, and during their keynote presentation, they announced huge changes to pretty much all of their operating systems. The biggest changes this year, though, are coming to the iPad with iPadOS 26. Yes, I know, not 1926. This new version of the OS brings loads of new visual changes, as well as a brand new windowing system, some file management improvements, and huge upgrades for podcasters, musicians, and creatives in general. I'll put a link in the description if you want a full rundown of everything they announced. I downloaded the developer beta of iPadOS 26 to see if any of these changes affect music production on iPad and Logic Pro for iPad in particular. While the new additions in this version of iPadOS don't affect Logic Pro users as dramatically as they do GarageBand users, for example, there are still some big old changes to talk about. A quick word of warning first though, the developer beta for iPadOS 26 is very, very buggy, and I wouldn't recommend installing it on your iPad unless you're really curious, and definitely not if you're currently working on a project or if you need it for work or something. There is a likely far more stable public beta for iPadOS 26 coming next month, and the full release will arrive in the autumn, so holding off for one of those is probably the best idea. Anyway, Apple added a new way to import files and samples into Logic Pro for iPad with version 2.1 and the introduction of sample folders, but the process is now even easier with iPadOS 26. In iPadOS 26, you have the option of the very macOS-like windowed apps to have multiple apps open in their own resizable windows. With this setup selected, I can tap and drag on the bottom corner of Logic Pro for iPad's window to make it smaller. If I then tap on the empty space, I can open another app and have it open in its own window on the same screen at the same time. If I select the Files app, I can then navigate to a folder full of samples, for example. I can then tap and hold on a sample and select Quick Look to preview it. Then I can simply drag and drop the sample from the Files app window straight into Logic. Great stuff. Speaking of resizing windows, Logic is one of the few music production apps, at least currently, that can be freely resized with iPadOS 26 windowed apps UI option enabled. You just need to tap, hold and drag the bottom highlighted corner and you can resize Logic's window to pretty much any dimension you want. Other apps like GarageBand or Cubasis 3, for example, can only be resized a little bit, so this is great for flexibility. macOS style menus have been added in iPadOS 26. Just swipe down from the top of the screen to access them. I fully expect these to be refined and rejigged before the full release of this OS, as at the moment you don't have a lot of options inside Logic Pro for iPad. You can select from all the keyboard shortcuts, which isn't particularly helpful really, and you have some window controls and a help function. One good thing here is that in the Logic Pro menu, you can access Logic Pro's settings without having to actually open and hunt through the iPad settings menu itself. In Control Center, which you still access by swiping down from the top corner, there's this new Logic Pro specific menu that you'll see when the app is open. From here, I can turn on the new global noise cancellation feature for the current microphone. It apparently blocks out ambient noise, which could be handy if you're recording in an untreated room or noisy environment. So this is the iPad microphone just set as standard. There's no noise isolation here, and you should be able to hear some background noise in this recording. And I now have the voice isolation setting switched on, which should help to filter out some of that background. What's more interesting is that I can select what microphone Logic will use to record audio with. With this Audion Evo 4 interface attached, I can tap on the microphone menu and select it, and the microphone I have attached to it as the currently active microphone. I can then jump in and change the mic to the iPad's built-in microphone on the fly. 
Yes, you can already assign inputs and outputs from inside Logic Pro itself, but this control allows you to set your microphone at a system level. In fact, it actually overrides your selection inside Logic Pro if you select a different option from the control center. Very interesting, and it's great to see macOS core audio still system level stuff coming to the iPad. Nothing massively earth shattering or groundbreaking in iPadOS 26 for Logic Pro for iPad users then. Though the big star of the OS overall is undoubtedly the new windowed apps option, which makes working with samples and files much more straightforward at least. Let me know your thoughts on the iPadOS 26 beta down in the comments and whether or not you've been brave enough to install it on your own iPad. Subscribe to the channel, bash the bell, strike the like, all that YouTube stuff below as well. I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video.